like we're getting ready to get started on uh, the tattoo. <laughs> Here we go. It's on. <laughs> and it's definitely not as loud as I remember them being when I was younger. Yeah, it's, uh, those are the rotary machine, or I'm sorry, coil machines that you're thinking of. Um, these are rotary, much quieter. Uh, the Rolls Royce of tattoo gun. Kind of. <laughs> tattoo machines. Machines, not yes. guns. Don't want to call them guns. The old schoolers will fight you over it. Okay, you ready? Yep. All right, let's start so off the, easy. The wife doesn't even know it yet, but I'm getting um, a tattoo of a cassette with uh, my handwriting. It's a mixtape for her. And there's the first piece. <laughs> hmm. Here we go. We're off and running. So you guys are kind of like hairdressers in a way. I mean, you get to sit with people and they basically probably tell you their life story in a 20 minute to two hours. Pretty spread. much. And sometimes it's too much information. But uh, but no, yeah, actually, uh, we have a lot in common with hairdressers and vice versa. Uh, a lot of commission based uh, things. Uh, same kind of life, uh, lifestyle. And over the years, Unintentionally, but I've actually a lot of my girlfriends were hairdressers. <laughs> actually, my wife now did hair at one point. So yeah, it's 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 I don't know, just some mag yeah. draw or I don't know. It's weird, but yes, similar, very similar. How long have you guys been married? Uh, we just uh, celebrated. Well, we've been married since 2011, but uh, a week ago today was our 16th anniversary of when being when together. We started dating. Yeah. Yeah. So, we just had ours. 10 or 11, same. And I'm glad I waited. I was 39, and she would have been 37 when we started dating. And I'm glad I waited. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't grown up enough yet. <laughs> no. Still kind of not, but. <laughs> no. I'm glad you got, you got your record store. Cause I love going in record stores growing up. I never really had a record store growing up other than like Sound Exchange, and I, got my very first cassette there it was um natalie merchant's Ten Thousand maniacs <laughs> going because of the night by bruce springsteen I'm, I'm aging myself so i'm definitely a little bit younger than you but uh i remember the first record store i remember in marietta was a place called flipside records and it was on putnam street a little small place and uh I don't remember any other ones but the, and then you got the, they had the national record mart in the mall yeah and then uh, one of my favorites was uh, I went to college in Pittsburgh, and they had a Ides Comics and Records. Uh, like all the local bands worked there, and all the punk bands and metal bands, and you know, just a huge selection of music and, and comics. When before uh, First City Records was a thing, I, I had Monsters Horde at the top of Putnam. Mm -hmm. It was mostly like retro toys, and we sold the the, the crap out of Ultraman toys and stuff. Yeah. Love that stuff, Godzilla, all that. Most of my childhood was uh, He-Man because it came out in '80, and I was born in '83, so it was like the first big toy line and cartoon I remember. Yeah. Um, what did what were you watching when you were growing up? Well, young, young, like as far as cartoons was you know, Bugs Bunny and all that. Yeah. Um, it's probably one of my favorite cartoons. Uh, I remember watching Speed Racer, but you didn't always see it around here. It was just luckily, like my grandparents, they lived near like Dayton and stuff at the time. So you could get More it on channels. TV. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I grew up in the woods. We only had 28 channels. No, it was 31. And um, we had Nickelodeon and VH1, no MTV, <laughs> no Cartoon Network. Oh, so man. yeah, we grew up, we had Fox Kids like the Fox Kids shows and then oh, the yeah. Nickelodeon, like the Nick at Nights and the Nicktoons and things like that in the early 90s. But uh, yeah, going back into the 80s, I remember a lot of time at my grandpa's house watching Looney Tunes and uh, my favorite was always Speedy Gonzalez. Oh, yeah. That was, uh, 
I was the lucky ones that had the three channels to choose from. The three? And, and you had to get up to change yeah, the channel. Yeah, you had to turn it off, yeah. of course. But uh, eventually, uh, I think it was HBO that came first. Like, oh, my God, it was a huge deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember my first movie watching on HBO. It was called Coma. And it showed some topless women in it. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm like 10 years old. But then, then when MTV came, it changed the world pretty much. And then not just Marietta, but everywhere, really. Well, that's the thing, like with Pathetic. HBO, back in the early days of HBO, they had burlesque shows on there. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, like, you know, there's a dancing and magicians, but it was like that burlesque, but you had a lot of women dancing that were topless, you know. And so we, as young boys, we watched those a lot. What about uh, read, read Something Diaries and then the, the Taxi Cab Confessions? Taxi Cab Confessions, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know how we got all that, but... Well, speaking of that, they had that real sex uh, show on HBO. Mm -hmm. My wife lived in L.A. for a long time, and a good friend of hers is a producer, and he was producing some of the real sex episodes, and they were doing one on the plushies and furries, where people dress up as animals. Oh, I'm, oh yeah, I'm well aware. I can't, well, I can't find the episode, but my wife and her friend Brian actually dressed up and was. And they were filming them running around town. And oh my god! So she's actually been on that show, but I, I've looked and we can't find an episode of it. That's really cool. So it's kind of neat. Yeah, it's you know, pretty crazy. Yeah, the fact that there's somebody out there for everybody, right? What do, you, what do you feel about the uh, the, the new trend of um, blackout tattoos? I've been seeing a lot more of that. Well, I think they're great for the large cover-ups. And you could do some really cool stuff with them. If you're just jumping right in and getting a blackout tattoo, you're done. I mean, there's no other options. You know? mm -hmm. So I, I'm a fan of like taking your time getting there. You know, But like I got tattoos I'd like to get covered up, and that's probably about the only option. But... What's your least favorite tattoo that you got? <laughs> well, you can see some of it poking out here. That's 1993 tribal, and oh, it's, it's the 90s was all about the tribal tattoos. Oh God, yeah, and uh, and Tasmanian devils, and but yeah, the that style of tribal too. Um, can't lift my shirt up to show you, but it's a it started out as a yin yang with some even worse tribal. So I didn't like that, so I added more tribal to it. That looked even bigger and more hideous. And then we tried to cover up with another type of tribal, and it got bigger and more hideous. And then, then there's this, I can't show you, but it's supposed to be outer space, but everything's done too small, so it just looks. <laughs> and um, when you're 18 years old, and you literally grew up in the, in the woods, there was no internet, nobody telling you, what things are. Yep. Um, I'll admit on the podcast that I have a tramp stamp. <laughs> and Awesome. No, no. It's, <laughs> well, it's, it's not on me, so I think it's awesome. <laughs> um, I haven't been able to go to a public pool in like 20 years. Oh, Lord. I know. I'm, it's, I didn't know that that was a thing. I didn't know that that was a place that, you know, women, normally, normally women got tattoos. Oh. And... Um, <laughs> The person who put it on my body didn't say a word to me, didn't try to talk me out of it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I went about a year thinking I was super proud of it, showing everybody. And, oh, Lord. And then as you, and, um, yeah, it became probably my biggest source of, of embarrassment uh, in my life for sure. Yeah. So that's one that I'm eventually going to either get covered up with like a mid-back and down tattoo or completely removed at some point. But... I don't want to do the removal. That's always an option, and sometimes we recommend that if we think that's a better option, <laughs> you know, like laser removals. But you know, it's painful and takes multiple trips. But yeah. So yeah. as a like uh, one thing that we try to be responsible with what we do, and if we think somebody's, especially young kids, we get a lot of them. If they think if we think they're making a really big mistake, we'll let them know. We'll be more mm -hmm. than happy to give them our opinions. Yeah. And, now, is there anything that you won't tattoo? Um, yeah, like, uh, anything, you know, anything racist, definitely. Like, we won't even do Confederate flags anymore. Um, anything drug-related, uh, just a bad idea. If somebody well, wants to get a pot leaf somewhere, uh, you know, as long as it's kind of somewhere that's... It's you know, legal now in Ohio. Yeah, so who cares, but... And, and not like I get requests for anything crazy as far as drugs go, but... 
But you know, I, I turned down a Confederate flag recently, and they're like, man, it's not about that and heritage and blah, blah, blah. blah. I was like, yeah, I understand, but people don't see it that way anymore. Yeah, the st you know, it's, stigma is real, and you know, it, yeah. follow, it follows you around, too. Because yeah, they'll be like, where'd you get that? Well, I got it from so-and-so, and then exactly. word will get around, and then... Maybe people will respond great, but there will always be five or ten that won't. And then yeah, I don't, uh, the positive reviews never get looked at. It's the one negative that everybody scrolls down to. <laughs> yep. And my, you know, my my goal in life is to be like Will Smith. Keep my name out your mother mouth. You know, <laughs> yeah. literally, that's what I tell people. I was like, I I, put, I keep my head down. I go to work. I go home to my kids. I I don't do drama, and I don't do you know. Because there's a lot of that, even, you know, in oh, small business and in and, um, collect, the collecting world. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that there's some tattoo drama. That we're not going to get into that. It's a lot. <laughs> there it's, is. it's terrible, yes. Oh, and now with social is. media, it becomes everyone's drama. You know? uh -huh. I've seen some posts recently of people leaving jobs and complaining about where they were mm -hmm. and, and how these bad things happened. But, but you were there for two years, collected money, and didn't try to fix yeah, anything. And, and, and you know what? Most of it, the people bad and are just trying to make themselves look better when it's probably something they did. You know, yeah. It's, so, yeah, I, I, I scroll right past that stuff. I don't play into it. And no. I don't even, the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got to the point where on my social media, like, Unless it's about my kids or my business or something I'm buying for the store or something exciting going on in my life, I don't post it. Like, yeah. no memes, no, definitely no politics, no religion. Amen. Because. <laughs> no pun intended. It can. Backfire. It'll backfire on you because no matter what, there's always, everybody's different. There's, a, you know, there's an un unlimited amount of personalities out there. And I don't want to offend anybody with my feelings or opinions because mine's no different than anybody else's um so i just keep it all to myself at this point yeah amen i mean you can't there's nothing you can do about it you know yeah bad mouth and, and team this and i'm team that and you guys suck and it's yeah, same it's the same thing for for in the record biz i mean there's people that won't come to my record store because they're so loyal to sound exchange but they what they don't realize is Elmer from Sound Exchange is one of my best friends. Exactly. And when they don't have something, he'll call me. Or when I don't have something, I'll call him. Yeah. People don't realize that, that it's all symbiotic, it's all love. Um, I'm sure it's different in every industry, but uh, yeah. it's gotta be difficult having employees too. How many, how many different people do you have working here as, as an artist? Um, myself, I got four artists, and I got uh, my niece as our counter girl. She works part time and mm -hmm. helps out, so. And then I got four artists, and then myself. What's yeah. the turnover rate like in the tattoo industry? Like artists? Yeah. Oh God. They come and go. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, like for a long time, I was a traveling artist, so I would, I moved around a lot. So I, I did. I think the other day I counted. I've worked in seventeen tattoo shops <laughs> over the, over thirty years. Oh my. Yeah. And it wasn't always bad. It's just like, well, I don't want to live here anymore. I'm going to move somewhere yeah. else. You know, I'd let them know. And you know, there's a couple times where, like, Chase, you're fired, beat it, you know. But mm -hmm. but those are rare. And, and if you're getting fired from a tattoo shop, you got to do something really stupid. We're blessed to not have that problem. Uh, nobody here has any hang-ups in that matter. And I don't want to harp on the pandemic, but how how was the pandemic in the tattoo industry? I know... I wasn't in retail at that time. Like I didn't have the record store or anything. I opened my car detailing business at the start of the pandemic because that was an industry that people were desperate for people to do. And I, you know, I was like a gangbusters. People yeah. wanted their cars cleaned, sanitized, things like that. I was taking a risk doing that, but I, you know, I was super smart about it. Sure. But like, you're like two inches from people's face all day long. Like how, how, how was business during that? And how... It was, well, you know, we had clothes for about two months, which was great. I got a lot of work done at my house. But uh, <laughs> coming back, I'd never been so busy in my life. People were ready to, yeah. to spend that uh, stimulus check. <laughs> yeah, like beforehand, like me personally, I had about a two and a half month wait. And then it shot up to six months and was steady for several years. Wow. The biggest, like, you know, dealing with, especially people wearing glasses, it was a real pain having that mask and your glasses fogging up. Yeah, fogging up and the mask falling down your face. And 
you know, I just can't grab my mask with gloves on. So, mm-hmm. so a lot of times I just kept it over my mouth and breathed through my mouth. Yeah. Um, the worst part was how rude people were. Like, like they were hell bent on just being disrespectful and rude, and it just made it difficult. Like, yeah. I just went home like upset almost every night because people were so disrespectful. And there was so many videos online of of of, of uh, people just fighting the system in whatever way that they felt was oh, necessary. Yeah. It was it was a very toxic time in America, American history. Um, I'm I'm kind of glad I didn't have to be a part of any of that like oh, man, it was, if i chose to in the COVID, all the all the damn conspiracy theories with it and mm. i ain't wearing a mask and i ain't doing this and hell with you and oh my yeah. lord it was terrible it's yeah like, i live with that a little uh, bit some of my family members are a little bit on that end of the spectrum yeah i was just more of the they want me to uh, shut up and i'll do it i got the only people i care about are my kids i don't care what you do yeah all I got to do is focus on my kids, and and you can have your hissy fits in the Kroger, whatever. So, how, what size are your ear gauges, by the way? Uh, they are one inch. One inch. Nice even number. I had a half at one point, and it took about a year, and they finally grew over. Mm-hmm. I never planned on ever taking them out because I got an office job where I was forced to. Right. Um, is this something that I could potentially get done again, or is it sure. the cartilage is built up and it was, it was your lobes, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it should be. I mean, they should like they're probably kind of uh, like I could take mine out for a long period of time, and it doesn't. I've had them God, over twenty years. Yeah, yours will probably never grow back if you take them out, will yeah, they? Yeah, they, they would tighten up some. Like I had a buddy that he was he was gone for a couple of years <laughs> he couldn't wear jewelry where he was uh-huh. and he had the same size ears and his shrunk his tightened up but he could still put his pinky finger through them uh-huh. but they're, they're they're still kind of elastic so that he could stretch them right back yeah i did mine myself and i used candlesticks uh this homemade not homemade candlesticks but you know you buy the, they're skinny at the time get a little thicker yeah. at the bottom i just hack off what i didn't need and push them through like like they make a great taper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, okay, so if you don't know the process of how to um, gauge or stretch your earlobes, it starts off as a sharp pointing needle, and then it goes to a slightly duller needle, and then by the time you get to the size that I was at, I'm sure his size, it is not a needle at all anymore. It is just a... Um, yeah, they, they have, like, professional tools for it, tapering pins, where they're, yeah, yeah. they're skinny at one end, and, and at the other opposite yeah. end, they get to the size you're going to. Hmm. So as they push it through, it stretches that skin, and, and it feels great, doesn't it? You can, you can hear it. <laughs> you can hear the, the, the ripping. But honestly, it was... Um, it's one thing that I do miss. I don't miss my piercings and any of that but i do miss having my ears gauged um except for the smell there there was a smell unless you clean it oh it's foul yeah, yeah. it's one of the most disgusting things you know, ever the, the death smell <laughs> no, i also I, I had a tongue piercing i stretched to a four gauge where i could put a straw through it and then i had a nipple piercing i stretched to like six i don't wear them anymore but yeah that that was a wonderful feeling yeah all right now <laughs> we got it. We got to talk about it. Uh-oh. The face tattoo. Okay. Cool. You, we can go there. Sure. Yeah. Okay. No problem. What inspired you to do it, and did anybody try to talk you out of it? And what does it mean to you, really? Okay. Um, well, it's a cover up. I had three dots originally, and over the years, and I think what happened, um, I was kind of a bigger fellow at the time. I was drinking a lot and blue bloated. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so I quit doing all that and lost a bunch of weight, and they seemed to be crooked. So uh, I was like, oh, I got to get this covered up. It's driving me crazy. So I designed this. Uh, this act, The circles didn't have any meaning other than I just wanted something tattooed on my face. And that's what I went with, and it was silly. But um, the tattoo I have now, there's a little story behind the design of it when I opened my shop in 2015 it was a Friday the 13th it's a coincidence well I knew it was coming up so I tried to make sure I got open that day mm-hmm. so officially was allowed to tattoo in here on it was February 13th 2015 
two and a half or so years later, I decided to, uh, to expand into the other side of the building mm -hmm. and renovated it. And the day I got it open was Halloween. So that's when, so you had 13th and then the 31st. Uh, the design on my chin, the actual design is the skin you see, not the black. So if you look, you can see a one and a three. And then when it's reversed on the other side, it makes a 31. Oh. So you, you see it now? I see it yeah. now, yeah. I didn't want it to be real obvious, but. No, it's like one of those uh, sail or, or schooner pictures, one of those seeing eye uh, things where you go, you go in cross-eyed, you pull back. Oh, oh yeah, there yeah, it is. The fractal <laughs> things. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the actual design is the, the negative space. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, do, do you do a lot of face tattoos around here? Because I know it seems like the younger generation, it's becoming like commonplace yeah, anymore. Uh, um, not a whole lot. Uh, we just had a young lady in here. Well, she was young to me, but she's probably in her 30s. But she had facial tattoos already. and She got a couple of things under her eyes. Um, like, uh, you know, I've been in the business since the 90s, and you didn't tattoo your face unless you were heavily tattooed already. Mm -hmm. And you know, we had people do it, or they wanted their hands. I'm like, we don't have other tattoos. Yet. I'm not going to do that. So, and I still stick to that. Yeah. Um, you know, we've had to kind of let a few things, but I'm not tattooing someone's face that isn't heavily tattooed already. Uh, you know, if they go and do it somewhere else, and that's on them. I, yeah. You know, if they want to live with that, I, I couldn't do it to, a, especially somebody young. You know, with all the, the Instagram stars and music videos and rappers and. And they're all named Lil, L-I-L. Yeah, L, this. Lil Peep, Lil Is there any big guys out there? They're all little. <laughs> they're all little nowadays. Yeah, they're emaciated because they oh, don't. Man. But yeah, uh, <laughs> so yeah, they see all these reality star you know, musicians and, and, you know, those guys are good to go. They don't need to worry about what society thinks yeah. of them. So we're finally <laughs> to a point in my life that I'm putting tattoos that not only I can see, but, um, you know, I get I get a lot of comments and compliments on especially the phoenix they're like oh i love your phoenix and i'm like well you know we had um my wife was pregnant with our fourth child my fourth her third and he was a twin and we lost one oh, no. so kind of like the one dies and then the rebirth uh the, of the phoenix yeah. rise from the ashes so we named him Phoenix. Oh, that's awesome. and, uh, so that tattoo is not only in remembrance of the one that we lost, but also, you know, for, for the one, for, the, for my final kid. And then on this hand, I got uh, four crows sitting on a branch, which is uh, for my four kids. What is uh, probably your most meaningful tat to you on yours? That I have? Yeah. Uh, oh, gosh. I would have to say my chin, probably. Um because where I came from and the, the CRAP I've gone through in my life and to rise and become a small business owner and at least in my opinion successful mm -hmm. I think that, that all the hard work all the years of you know wanting to give up and this kind of says it all you know this is yeah. my my thing my masterpiece so to speak you know not That's tattoo awesome. master but I created this you know and it's for you. It's not for anybody else. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm real proud of it. I mean, I got a lot of cool tattoos that have me. Like, I have a portrait of my mother, and I got a tattoo for my dad, and one for my brother, and those are all important too. But this is the most personal. You know, it's it wasn't easy getting here. <laughs> yeah, I wish I would have waited until later in life to get tattoos because it's like I said, my, my original tattoos really meant nothing. Yeah. They don't have any meaning to me now. Now my later ones all do, of course. But, um, you know, I'm a firm, not all my tattoos have some deep thing. Some of them are just silly. Some are just for fun. Uh, Do you ever tattoo yourself? Oh, yeah. I've done quite a few of myself. Uh, probably at least 15 or more. My, like my whole left hand I did myself. Probably should let someone else do it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it turned out okay. I mean, considering doing it one-handed. But uh, I mean, a bunch on my legs and... I think I did, I did one of myself about two years ago is the most recent. It's right here on the side of my leg here. But like all the places where I can reach are kind of taken up now. So it's it's hard to get in certain positions at a, at a fellow my age with a, a little, little belly sticking out there. It's kind of hard to reach <laughs> certain spots now. What do you consider the most uh, painful spot on the body to get a tattoo? 
My so far, my personal worst was the inside of my arm here. It's real mm-hmm. sensitive in there. Um, you know, like I, I don't have anything on my stomach or ribs, um, and I never will. I don't, even, I don't even care if I got numbing cream. I'm not doing yeah. it. Sounds like the bottom of the feet too would be. Bottom of the feet. Um, you know, and there's a few spots that are we don't need to discuss that would be terrible to get tattooed Yikes. on. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, just thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> don't think about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, any place that's like super thin skin right on bone yeah. has to be painful. Well, I don't, well, like 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 on the elbow. The, Holy crap! Yeah, the weenus. That was horrible. I imagine <laughs> yes. But like my shin wasn't bad at all. So you guys got um, an annual event that you guys put on, right? Yes, sir. And I, I guess I, I've never really been a part of it. Mm-hmm. So I, if you want to talk to, tell me a little bit about it and uh, how it came to be and like when it is and okay. stuff like that. Well, it's, uh, we call it the Bizarre Bazaar. And it, the, how I started it years ago, uh, there was a tattoo shop in Columbus that put on a punk rock flea market. And we went up there and got all, just random stuff, clothing. And I, I got a poster. I got a couple figurines. But just neat stuff. I'm like, mm. that's a great idea. And so I came up with the name, the Bizarre Bazaar. And uh, so it's annual. Usually what we do is first uh, Sunday of October. And uh, for 30 bucks, you get a 10 by 10 spot. And uh, I try to keep it weird, you know taxidermy, weird arts and crafts. <laughs> uh, we've had uh, uh, tarot card readers here, uh, and, and our you know, local artists as much as possible. We had a, we have a few people that come from out of town and vend, mm-hmm. and just and just trying to make as much money as they can. And yeah. then what I charge for the booths, I donate. First couple of years, I donated back into the neighborhood. Last year, a friend who's going through uh, like transplant issues and back and forth to hospitals, I donated to his fund. Uh-huh. To help me pay for gas, hotel rooms, and stuff like that. Yeah, every dollar, every dollar counts when it comes to yeah. medical bills are insane. I think we ended up it was almost nine hundred bucks. So between the booth fees and uh, they had uh, barcodes uh, where people could Venmo their money too. So I shared that. So yeah, I think they ended up getting it was like eight, nine hundred bucks for us. Cool. Mm-hmm. And where, where where do you where does it happen at? Uh, it's right here in the parking lot. Um, I got. I can get 13 or 14 people in my parking lot, and then the little side turn around here, we can get, I think I had 22 people last year. Uh, the city of Marietta's been fantastic with us. I just love the fact that you're over here on what they call the west side, mm-hmm. and uh, it seems like every year the west side gets more and more of a facelift. Every, everywhere you turn around, it's starting to really pop. Yep. And, uh, I think once the, the the walking bridge gets gets done, it's going to really, really, really increase tourism. It's going to help a lot. Uh, and when it was functional, it was a big part of this city, and it's how people got back and forth. And yeah. I grew up in a different part of town, but my dad grew up down the street here on Gilman, and so we was over here all the time visiting my grandmother and my cousin and his mom. They all lived in the same place. So I spent a lot of my childhood over here and horsing around on the bridge and... <laughs> It uh, opened my own business. I learned to fix a lot of things myself. Uh, the whole outside of the shop I painted, I painted all of this in here. When I expanded, I just had a foot operation, so the guys painted that side for me. But, but yeah, I, I try and do as much of it as possible. And, you know, I know every inch of this building. I bet. <laughs> Probably but some long nights know. in here, right? Oh, you don't even know, man. Oh, gosh. And it was under construction. I'd just sit in here for hours just looking because there wasn't nothing I could do, especially early on. I would just sit here for hours like trying to picture what it was going to look like. And I did drawings. And yeah. I have detailed drawings of what it was going to look like. And it, it hit the spot, but it was great. But uh, it took seven months. Uh, the guys working on my shop we were friends, but they would go and do other jobs like for a couple weeks and come back. Like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> Please get my shop finished. So uh, it, was a, it was a great time. And, it was difficult, but it was one of the best times watching it come together. And... All right, so we're going to go ahead and pause, and uh, we'll check back in uh, as the tattoo's getting closer to being completed. If you guys are enjoying this off-the-cuff uh, interview, and uh, we'll be back in just a few.
Once we get all this little fine line stuff done, we can start rocking. It's going to get a little bit uh, personal. What is the grossest place you've ever had to tattoo somebody? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have to, but that you chose to, I guess. Um, <laughs> how do I put this? Uh, the, we'll, we'll do it this way. The only thing I haven't tattooed is the male genitalia. Okay. I've tattooed literally everything else. <laughs> so... <laughs> Really? <laughs> Leave that to your imagination. Uh, butt, cheeks, top of the head, bottom of a foot, fingers, hands. So, I mean, I've done some facial stuff over the years, obviously. Uh, I've, armpits. That sounds gross. painful. Yeah. I've got one that touches my armpit, and that was horrible. It felt like they took a hot poker and jammed it in my armpit. Mm. Was, which he might have done. I wasn't watching. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I just the only thing I haven't done is uh, the male genitalia. Yeah. Not even my own. Yeah. You ever watch the show uh, Hot Ones? I have not. Uh, it's a, basically a guy interviews celebrities while they eat hot chicken wings and they start mild and they go all the way up to the hottest wings in the world. <laughs> right. And they, you know, the, and the, the host eats them as well as the guest. And um, this is kind of like on the lines of that, except for you're not getting a tattoo at the same time, but it's like, Trying to form sentences while you're feeling like the the nice little. It's tough, ain't it? It what's some? I I feel like I'm hanging in there. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing great. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, some people are born to get tattoos and they love the feeling. I am just one of those people that can highly tolerate it, and sometimes I even look forward to it. Like the anticipation is like a positive anticipation, yeah. not a nervous anticipation. Um. But I'm never going to come out of the way and say that uh, it feels good. Have you ever gotten into a tattoo and the person just couldn't handle it anymore and quit like halfway through? Um, or changed their mind? The only time that's like where they actually just stopped was I was an apprentice. And my brother and a college buddy of his come to visit me. I was in Charlotte. And his buddy wanted a tattoo. I don't remember what it was. And... So we got it ready, got the stencil on, and I did that first outline, and he stopped and wouldn't let me finish it. <laughs> but I don't, I don't remember, I, don't, I couldn't remember if it was because of her, or he's like, you know what, this is a dumb idea, I don't want this <laughs> tattoo on my ankle. Oh, an That's the only tie. one that really, now there's a lot of tattoos I, I started, maybe ran out of time and never finished, and then never saw again. Yeah. But like, uh, but no, that's the only one that actually stopped me as I'm tattooing them and never finished it. And to my knowledge. How often do you get somebody in here that wants you to fix a really, really, really bad portrait <laughs> or uh, a misspelled word? Uh, well, those specific ones, not very often, but they I've had to fix a few portraits, uh, but a lot of just poorly executed tattoos, mm -hmm. you know, or, well, I went there and everyone said he did good work and you know, he had a lot of house tattoos and you know, all my friends go there and theirs look good, but for some reason mine looks terrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, every time. I swear to God, word for word, every time. Everyone else's looks good but mine. <laughs> like, uh, you know what? Theirs probably didn't look good either. I don't yeah. know. I, I, I'd be too scared to get any any portrait, lifelike portrait of any particular person. No matter how good you are, you could have a bad day, and then you're stuck with uh, Bob Marley cross-eyed, yeah, there's Something. not much room for error when it comes yeah. to portraits, and you know I, I do them, and you know my 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 rear end's puckered the whole time. <laughs> like you, know, you really got to pay attention. Yeah, you probably would not be doing an interview if I was getting a portrait. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to talk much anyway. My face would be buried into this into the tattoo. But yeah, you don't want to be distracted doing portraits. Yeah. Well, we talked at first uh, about how we had to turn the music off for copyright reasons. Mm -hmm. Uh, being that music is basically my my life, let's talk about uh, what do you listen to the most? Like, what are your influences with music, and what are uh, some of your favorite albums to listen to while you're giving somebody uh, a piece? Uh, well, you know it's ironic. When I was young, before long before tattooing, I wanted to open a record store, like back when record yeah. stores were a thing. So it's kind of that's cool. Uh, 
I love rock. You know, rock and roll is my true love. Um, I lean towards metal more, uh, specifically the stoner rock genre. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably the thing the most, but I love rockabilly. And, uh, and one of my true loves is ska music, like original ska, mm -hmm. like 60s, you know, okay. 70s maybe. What about the, the, the specials? Specials are great. They're one of my favorite. They bands. were like the second wave. Uh, would they probably late seventies, early eighties? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of their songs they do are covers of the original songs. Mm -hmm. Prince Buster uh, is a big one. Uh, Desmond Decker, uh, Toots and the Maytals. I mean, their early work. That's what I really like. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna some, have to go deep dive some of these oh, people. Oh, you got to. It's it's some, it's amazing stuff. Um, you know, Bob Marley, when he was a kid, was a Scott artist. Him and Whalers, uh, there was a band called the Scatolites they did a lot of stuff with. Hmm. But that, that finger popping, and you just got that groove. You know, it's, it's fun. It, it puts you in a good mood. And it's great music. You know, Ska, S-K-A. And then reggae formed not long after. But, like, very early reggae and Ska is one of my, not my top favorite, but, like, top three. All right. What about some bands in the in the metal metal genre? Uh, my favorite favorites, uh, like Fu Manchu is one of my favorites. I like them. Love them. Great in concert. Uh, uh, Caius, if you're familiar with Caius. Nope. Uh, New to me. One of the guys in Caius, when they split, formed Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, Josh. Okay. Yeah. Homie. Yeah, yeah, homie, homie, however. Whatever. You he was in Caius <laughs> before, and they're they're fantastic. Um, yeah, then Queens of the Stone Age, of course. One of the best concerts I've ever seen. Love, like old, the last couple albums have kind of gotten away from what I like about them. Still good, but uh, I like their early stuff the best. Now, when I got my first tattoos, I was like 18 and 19, and the dude played um, System of a Down Toxicity on repeat the entire time I was there, and then I went back couple months later to get the next tattoo and that was the same album still on repeat oh, God. I wonder if it was like yeah oh it, it's kind of like gives me PTSD now every time I hear <laughs> Chop Suey because when uh, when I was getting that tram stamp tattoo I was in yeah I know I was leaned over in a chair hunched <laughs> I know the position. I can't imagine you sitting like that. I, I know. Ass crack hanging out. Like four hours it took. Oh, four wow. hours. Oh, I stood up and passed out. Oh, I had yeah. to I had to go and lay on the couch for a while. Because, you know, the pain was kind of intense in certain spots going right, right over the spine. Yeah. Kind of makes your hands uh, tingle. Mm -hmm. And and uh, when I got done and stood up, I had I had to go and lie down on one of their <laughs> couches for a little bit. I evidently got too lightheaded. But, uh, yeah. Every time I hear System of a Down, I immediately go back to God, sitting in that tattoo chair with my butt crack in the air. And <laughs> I think there's a song in there somewhere. Oh, uh, well. Uh, oh, my truck nice. broke down, my, my dog died, and I accidentally got a tramp stamp. Do you remember what year it was when you were getting tattooed there? I was 18 and 19, so would have been... 20, 2002, okay. 2002, well, 2002. Good friends of mine owned that in the, in the late 90s. And then, unfortunately, one passed away. Oh. And then the other one sold it to the gentleman you're probably talking about. Yeah. yeah it was before, it would have been before that. But that would have been cool if it was my buddy who had done your tattoo. A good dude. I wonder how many people they told the story of the guy that, Got the tram stamp. Like, I, I bet I was par part of his daily banter I with customers. Yeah, oh, man. I would have made fun of you constantly. I, I would have made fun of you while you were there. Yeah. <laughs> I know, and I wish you would have, and I would have got it somewhere else. I don't think, out of all the ass hats or tramp stamps I've done, I don't think I've ever done one on a mail. It's <laughs> Thanks a lot. That makes it even worse. Hey, man. Oh, man. <laughs> You hear that? I am a. Well, you're one of a kind. I'm an American you know? original. Yeah, see, there you go. That's uh, on on, uh, on perspective. Yes. Sec <laughs> this is your second reminder, kids. Think twice and do your research before you tat anything on your body. 
<laughs> well, I'm just glad that's not a thing anymore. Oh my lord, that's oh. all we did. It was almost like a line of women out the door waiting for their tramp stamps. How about a tribal tattoo over a, a man's belly button? Any of um, those? I, well, yeah, I've done a few. Mostly it was armbands. Yeah. Oh yeah. The uh, barbed wire. Yeah, barbed wire, just tribal. A lot of tribal armbands. Oh my lord. Well, The Rock and all those wrestlers in the '90s and the Attitude Era had the. The, the, the Goldberg well, tribal. Used, people used to come in all the time. Can I get some Goldberg tribal? I'm like, who's Goldberg? I no. <laughs> See, I was a late 70s wrestling fan. And then around 80, I'd 12, 13. It was kind of, yeah, I'd rather do other things. And... Not too many people with tattoos back in back in that day in wrestling. There was... Um, no, not at all. Yeah, it was mostly um, men in makeup, like a... Bunch of fat beer drinking dudes. And yeah, those ones too. But I was thinking more like Gorgeous George. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Actually, I think it's there was a wrestler when I was an apprentice. I was in Charlotte, and there was wrestlers in the area. One of them came in. He was the one. He had curly hair and always sprayed his hair. And he had his wife yep. was a manager. Yep, that that was. He came in and got a, a, a portrait of his wife, Elizabeth. Maybe my wrong wrestler. Super cool guy, man. He was. I don't know violent. what his wife's name. Was. He yeah, real interesting. I didn't do the tattoo. But. Oh. Uh, you know, I sit there and hung out while the guy I worked for, it might, who apprenticed me, did the tattoo. But uh, yeah, it was super cool. Met, met a bunch of wrestlers there actually. Magnum TA, remember that guy? Yeah, he um, almost died in a plane crash. Got like paralyzed or something. Wasn't it? Was it a motorcycle? Or a motorcycle. Yeah, it might well, have. Been, it might who have, was it? One of them did. Was it? Was it? Rick Flair got in. Rick the, Flair in, was in the plane crash, and he yeah. broke his back. Yeah. And then now he's, you know, and he's still. Drinking and partying and, and oh, taking man. bumps at almost 80 years old. He's awesome. We just watched a documentary on him. Yeah, on Netflix. Yeah, he's crazy. Oh, I love that dude. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of business to take care of. We've got another event that you guys are, are, are like the host store for yep. that's being put on by a, a guy that reached out to you. Um, mm -hmm. let, let's dive into the upcoming event and how people can be part of it. And um, if you're a vendor out there, uh, let's talk about what kind of things they're looking for for this event. Okay. Well, it's a, a gentleman named Sean who's a promoter. He does a, a, the first time I heard of him, he does a show at the Moundsville Penitentiary. And uh, I haven't been to it personally yet, but uh, tattoos and oddities. Uh, so we, we got in contact and he invited me to be this, the host shop. And, uh, and sponsor of the convention. And, you know, being a business center, I thought it'd be a good idea to jump aboard. And oh, yeah. You always, uh, you know, I've worked conventions. I haven't worked one in, God, 20, 23 years. He says we'll have 200 tattoo booths and about 100 oddity booths or vendor booths. Uh -huh. uh, live music, food trucks. Uh, if you haven't been to a tattoo convention, it's they're awesome. Um uh, Especially if you have, uh, like, if you have a favorite artist that it's too far away to drive or fly, if you're lucky enough that they're coming to your town or yeah. a nearby convention, you, 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 there's usually a day fee or a weekend fee, and you go in and you get tattooed. And uh, it's now, can like you book with them in advance, or yeah. do you have to book the time in advance? Uh, you can, uh, you know, especially the, the more well-known artists usually do that. Um, like a gentleman I worked for in the '90s that at the time was a famous artist and you know, people would book months out ahead uh -huh. and that was back before emails and all. they would have to send him a pamphlet or a, a envelope with their design mostly portraits that's what he was famous for and money to hold a spot so. wow you're just throwing money in an envelope and putting yeah, it in the mail and hoping much, to god yeah. that he, yeah, this, this person's on the up and up and that's that it makes it, it there so uh <laughs> oh, boy. They're, uh it's, it's like a circus atmosphere and just a lot of you know, obviously tattoos and creative people, and uh, you got a lot of people that uh, sell artwork. Uh, they'll do some, a painting and then have prints made where you can buy them for cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I actually, I got a lot of the artwork in here from conventions and uh, just to help fill my walls up. And they're having a lot. They're, I, I don't know who the bands are yet, but there's going to be live music. And, uh, you know, and being in a small town, you're going to know everybody there as far as the, the people coming to visit it, you know. Uh, yeah. And then you know what I should do? I should rent a booth as an oddity sideshow attraction and just sit there and show off my tram stamp. That would, you, you could. And I probably yeah. would get a lot of tips. You know, like uh, you know, the crab man on the old sideshow circuses and you'd have yeah. somebody out front yeah, barking and 
taking money to come in and yeah. see the, the world famous male tramp stamp. Okay. Friday, September 20th, uh, it goes from noon to 11 p.m. Saturday noon to 7 p.m. at the Washington County Fairgrounds, the Wonders and Oddities Expo, put on by, um, hosted by Monkey's Uncle Tattoo as the home store and put on by a guy named Sean. Then there are 100 oddity uh, spots available and up to 200 for tattoo booths. Live music, $20 entry fee. Is that $20 each day? Uh, yeah, th I, there might be a, a, a deal if you want it all weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. I'm not. I don't know. And, Usually they yeah. do. And as uh, the, the music acts get announced, and more details kind of come to, come together, I'll gladly share on the social media on the First City Podcast yeah, page. No. All the de all the details, so everybody who listens can make sure to, to catch on. Absolutely, them. and then we got uh, on our page. We'll be, we share the link every often, so often, so it's on our page. If you want to contact Sean and want to be a vendor, or just need want more information, uh, we have the link on our shop page. Yep, somewhere on there, you might have to scroll a little bit. But. And your Facebook page is Monkey's Uncle Tattoo. Yes, is the name of it. Yeah, we have Instagram as well. Uh, we also have a website now. <laughs> so it's pretty neat. Uh, we've had it for about a year. It's, there's no information on the convention there, but we do have a merchandise store there. How important is social media to your shop? Uh, it, it's very important. Um, uh, last time I looked, I think we had like about 11,000 followers. Yeah. So you That's know, huge I, yeah, for this area. Yeah, it's not too bad, yeah. Um, f from what I've been told anyway. <laughs> Well, I've been in business for about two years, and we're still in the two to three thousand range. So, yeah, so, so yeah, that's uh, you huge. Know, instantly, you can contact almost that many people. Obviously, yeah. not all of them are going to see it, but but yeah, when you're you know, we like to post uh, pictures of our tattoos so people can look and see what our quality level is, and or, or, and uh, uh, every morning I, mm, I look, just mm -hmm. put my fingers crossed. Yeah. But we just had, uh, literally, just got a, a one-star review because we recommended another shop to get a piercing at. And this woman tried to contact that shop and couldn't get through, and they gave us a bad review because of it. <laughs> yeah. You're damned if you do, damned if you do. We're just trying to help, and we yeah. still get bad review. It's uh, it's frustrating. Drives me crazy. Keyboard warriors, people who don't have too much time on their hands. Yeah. Now, if we deserve it, then by all means. But, Absolutely. But this one, I... I don't know. I always, I always feel like it's the responsibility of the person leaving the review to give the benefit of the doubt. I mean, you chose to spend your time and your money there, unless it was something really egregious. But if it was something that can be fixed, I always say give the person the opportunity to try to fix it before you bash them. Yeah, I mean, because we're, we're all we're, we're all people. Humans. We're just fucking humans, yeah. man. Yeah, we're all people. Especially we all live in the same little town. So I'm, I'm glad we've been able to, to actually find time to pin this down, especially on a Monday. I mean, mon Mondays are my pretty much my only day off. Um, people think because we're closed on Sunday that it's my day off, but that's typically when we do all of our cleaning, ordering. Yep. Ugh, it never stops. There's no real day off, yeah. really. Yeah, and now this is what I do on Mondays, either my interviews or <laughs> or editing or whatever. But, you know, I, I put this on myself, you know. This is like a passion project and... Yeah, it's it's super super cool. Uh, I mean, to see people doing this, and uh, I just uh, I just got a lot of respect for it. Anybody that puts in the time, the hustle. It's nice to see. Uh, I mean, looking around this place, this is probably the nicest tattoo parlor, if you even call it a parlor, <laughs> shop, that I've parlor ever, works. ever seen. It's it's what you would expect. It's got all the uh, Kitty, weird art, the oddity things, the horror stuff. What is it about tattoos and horror that kind of go hand in hand, in your opinion? Well, to be a tattoo artist, you got to be kind of weird in first place. <laughs> but like growing up as a kid, I would stay up in the middle of the night watching horror movies. You know, the old Universal monsters. Heck and, yeah. You know, Godzilla movies. You know, five, six years old. Here I was in front of a TV watching. I just always yeah. loved that. And, and, uh, and that kind of horror movies and gore and I don't know I don't know what it is but it's pretty common mm -hmm. I don't know lifting 1500 pound crates all day long back and forth up the hills it's 
definitely not a, a young man's game, but uh, <laughs> you got to do what you got to do, right? Yep. I'm sure there you have days where your back hurts from bending, like sitting in weird positions to tattoo somebody. Yeah, or... constant headaches. Yeah, it's mm. I got carpal tunnel syndrome in both wrists. Yeah, my dad had the double surgery and it changed his life. He, yeah, he yeah. did uh, like bulldoze operating and yeah, um, yeah. like large heavy machinery operating and the buzzing, the vibrating on his hands all day long. Yeah, it destroyed. It, using uh, the coil machines now isn't bad, but the old or, uh, the rotary machines, but the coil machines, they kind of set back off your hand, and they're not real heavy, but that weight for, you know, 28 years, it just, it, and then this hand, you got to stretch skin with, and, mm -hmm. you know, go home at night, and they're just both aching, and so, yeah, it, uh, switching into these machines, it's way more comfortable, and my wrists and hands don't, they used to fall asleep real bad, and I'd have to shake them out every so often. Uh, not so much now while I'm tattooing, but like riding a bicycle or on a motorcycle where you got, you know, my hand, my right hand's real bad. It goes mm -hmm. to sleep and numb and you got to shake it out and to quote, uh, Tyler Swift that one, or shake it off or something. Is that what's called? <laughs> Taylor Swift. He's a Tyler Swift. Did I say <laughs> Same difference. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. I'm a big fan of Taylor Swift. Not her music, but her hustle and oh, yeah, the way she, she treats her fans. She ain't messing around. No, she's good for her. Yeah, she uh, she is a big money maker for us, for sure. Uh, I get made fun of quite a bit for all the the Taylor parties that we put on and the events. I'm like, if you'd see the faces of these kids, you know, women, some men that to know that they're in a room full of people that all love the exact same thing. Yeah. That's what these tattoo conventions got to be like for you guys. It's like. There's, there's never a feeling of awkwardness because everybody's like the love. It's awesome, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, and, and you know, I don't work them. Well, I haven't worked one since 2000. But when you, you, you come away from them and you got insp inspiration and, you know, you're seeing these tattooers that you follow from other cities or countries that are right in front of me and you can watch them work or get tattooed by them and, uh, and this, all the art. And, you yeah, know, for the most part, you know, Tattooers at conventions get along really well. Sometimes not so much back home, you know, unfortunately, but uh, everyone puts on a good time at a, at a tattoo show usually. And mm -hmm. it's, it's just real inspiring. I got two artists here that haven't worked one yet. This will be their first one, and it's a good one to get started at. Now, did you have a shop before this place um, in Marietta, or is, is this your first fray? This is a... my first shop, my, okay. my first shop. I've worked in, you know, like I said earlier, a lot of shops. But yeah. This is my personally first shop. And how how is it different being the owner of an actual brick and mortar as opposed to just being an, a, a tattoo artist? Well, yeah, as you know, we have to suffer all the consequences and have all the, ris the ris risks. And, you know, as a tattooer before, if I didn't like where I was, I just left. You know what I mean? I yeah. can't do that. <laughs> You know, I love my shop. I, I love coming to work, and my, I love my shop. And but you know, as a tattoo, you know, as just a tattooer, you know, I've worked in plenty of shops that were not done in a professional manner. And I'm like, I'm out of here. I mean, I don't want nothing to do with this place. But you know, we put we put up all the money and the risk, and you know, we suffer the consequences if there is any. And uh, you know, we got to pay the bills and. Make sure you know. I have you know, four or five other people working here, and that's a big responsibility. It wouldn't be hard for them to find jobs elsewhere. I mean, plus, I mean, they're very talented. But um, but yeah, it's a it's a lot to think about. You know, and, and where I'm at, and and you too, we're in floodplains, so oh god, that's a big thing to worry about, especially hurricane season. Our last big flood was because of a hurricane. Yeah. And I didn't have a business of my own at the time, but I worked on one on Second Street, and it had two feet of water in it, and it was crazy. Right. And then right then, that was the Ivan flood. Yeah. And yeah, then that yeah. winter, I had another flood that had maybe six inches of water. Luckily for me, my store is already up. We have like two little steps. It's up a, a few feet, and then most of my shelving we built at the four foot mark. You know, mm, smart. So I'm hoping that. If it does, if and when it does happen, that the important stuff will be salvaged, 
and you, usually you get enough of a notice that I'll have time to run in there and load a truck yeah. to get the high dollar stuff out. But uh, that's also why you got to pay good insurance. <laughs> no way around it. You have to have good insurance in this town. All right, we're, guys, we're going to chill for a bit. We're going to just keep working on this tattoo and uh, we'll check back in right when, when it's completed here in just a little bit. Okay, so stick around here at uh, Monkey's Uncle Tattoo in Marietta. All right, guys, about two and a half, three hours later, the tattoo is finished. This is what I was going for, and this is what we got. Completely blown away by the realism. It looks freaking amazing, and uh, I'm going to go home and show my wife that I got uh, Judy's mixtape mi uh, tattooed on my arm here. So make sure that we uh, listen to the podcast and we will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for, uh, for doing this work with me. And uh, yeah, y'all take care.